now when you're walking down the street. And bullets are flying all over the place and that. Um, and I always used to find those moments incredibly exciting when I was younger. <laughs> I didn't particularly enjoy that day because I tore this ligament in the back of my leg and it kind of literally, I thought, God, we've only just started the day. I've got a whole day to climb through the holes in those walls and this body armour and it. I felt as if I'd been, you know, injured. I thought injured from the word go. I mean, I think by day two or day three, um, Don was shot at by someone who was, you know, shooting well and intending to kill him or, or me, and Don wasn't running very far, so I, I grabbed him and, and propelled him pretty quickly down the street, which didn't work, actually, because he was so shocked that I grabbed him that he sort of... Um, legs pedaled a bit like a cartoon character and he spun around and twisted his knee. Where's, Do where's Dawn now? Where is Dawn now? Well, I certainly didn't want to bring Dawn back dead. Um, I think that's a, a very pertinent sense of the responsibility I felt to mention. Um, don't die dawn should have been the motto of this trip and he didn't either <clears throat> um i did feel a huge responsibility to tell him and to the paper and i was taking a 77 year old man into syria someone who's um had a, a bypass operation who's had a stroke in the past um into a place where there are no hotels there's none of the sort of luxury style of war reporting it's it's tough it's dirty it's hard it's cold the living conditions are pretty abysmal um, it's violent, it's exceptionally unstable. Uh, it's a bad place to, to take a, a young person, let alone an old person. You know, this wasn't some kind of circus act that we were trying to do. I am a working um, photojournalist and, and Anthony had an obligation to do his work. So it wasn't like him nannying me through this because, you know, mentally, it's the mental strength you need in a situation like that. Huh? He wants to it's about one o'clock in the morning. Don's been asleep for a couple of hours. We had a good supper. Don regaled our company with tales of childhood and Second World War. In regards to tomorrow, when we go into Syria, there's something like the start of the summer holidays. He's really excited. Thank God, one of us is. The moment you cross the border, you know, your heart starts racing just that little faster and your head swivels just that much more, you know, because you feel an immediate vulnerability. The war itself and the fear of the war itself didn't bother me. I mean, I have an enormous respect for fear, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't afraid, otherwise I wouldn't have gone back. I'd much prefer... You know, I could, I could have preferred the safety and comfort of this house. But no, I, I wanted to go. I wanted to, I wanted to get this out of my system. I wanted to see what was going on and why I haven't been involved over the years. What, what stopped me going back? There are very few journalists in, in Syria. Syria has been abandoned by everybody. Um, the international community have abandoned it. The age community have abandoned it. And to some degree, the foreign media has also abandoned it. The bulk of the work of the media in Syria is conducted by young freelance, usually photographers. Now for them to see Don McCullin, one of their sort of heroes of their youth, come in as an old man and be inside Aleppo was, you know, they were thrilled. And it was important, beyond the fact they were thrilled, it was important because it legitimised their presence and their work at a time when so many of the big names in journalism won't go anywhere near Syria. Amazing day today. The only trouble is, I reckon the old artillery observers will swing into action shortly. Whew. I see 
for miles, so Mike can see for miles, they can see for miles. So we'll probably get hammered today. Well, at night we stayed in this building, which was the rebels had taken over. It was an old government building. But then it became an amazing target, and each night there, we were receiving incoming shells that, that I, I understood. That we, we call it walking. That means they come towards you. They go boom, 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 boom. And I felt that, that they were definitely walking. They, they, they were being targeted to walk towards our building. I could feel the building shaking. They were so close. I was crawling into this kind of nest arrangement I'd made on the floor in this building in a, in a, a kind of kitchen place because it had walls either side. And I thought, if the place does get targeted, all the windows will come in and cut you to pieces if you're lying in a big open room. What you were doing, you were trespassing on the lives of other people who fled these buildings, fled their homes. You were trespassing through their living rooms because they made holes in the walls through various flats so that they could communicate their way through without being on the streets, which made them a sniper's kind of target. So a lot of, they, there's almost a, a rat-like warren arrangement inside apartment blocks. And so you'd go in from one apartment to another through a, a bloody great hole in the wall. And in doing so, you would be passing the, the, you know, the, the history and lives of people who lived there who'd fled. And then on one occasion, we found ourselves in a dress shop and it was quite startling to turn around and see a mannequin standing there without any clothes on, a, a woman. But nevertheless, it gave one a shock. You saw it as another ghost-like human being standing there. And then surrounding it were all these uh, racks of dresses. It was very, very bizarre, very strange. It's like being in a Fellini film. I think I was surprised by his stoicism. I mean, Don, there was never any sense that Don was going to say, I'm tired or I've had enough until right at the very end. Um, his physical courage was pretty much undiminished to the extent that it was rather me. He was acting quite sort of bad mouth nanny type role, like, Don, right, that's enough there. Move away from that corner and stop this and stop that. I was worried that, you know, he wouldn't be quite as on the ball as he would have been if he was current and um, would get himself hurt. But um, he's a brave guy. He's still a pretty tough guy. You know, I started losing heart after a while there. I started thinking, God, you know, haven't we been here before? You know, we've done this before, haven't we? And what are you trying to do here? And I started, you know, the moment you start self-questioning and, and, and analysis, you know, you start to, in a way, break the fibre of yourself down a bit. It's a bad place to go. You shouldn't think too much. You should just get on with the work, you know. Fabulous area for me. Can I stop over well, here? John, please? hang on, mate. No, let's watch this. It's mortared heavily and shot across. I was concerned that I'd be taking Don like some old lion hunter for one last shot, some hit off the action, um, to sort of kick back against his sense of boredom. But I think, having gone through the full experience, full 10 days with him, that it was deeper and more complex than that. I think he really had come to say farewell, to see war one more time and say farewell. Don? 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 I couldn't get it. But, uh, but don't go so far because there is a sniper. I said to myself, you know, look, you've seen this now. It hasn't changed. You're going to get the same kind of image out of it. It's going to be an image of, of destruction, an image of pain and misery. You've, you've been flogging this for 50 years. Do you think any good comes of it? And do you think there's any need to push this any further?